Mr. District Attorney. Radio friends, this is Harrington. I'm speaking to you from the District Attorney's office. Two months have gone by since we captured Duke Orlando at the municipal airport. Two months in which the District Attorney and our entire staff have been working day and night piecing together the evidence we have collected against Duke Orlando and his restaurant rack. The Ohio kid, the Duke's torpedo, has supplied us with much of the connecting links that we needed. He has turned state's evidence, which means he'll be a witness for the district attorney. The district attorney has been in court for the past five days, and this morning he was going to call the Ohio kid to the stand. Kid, I want to remind you that you have sworn to tell the truth while in the witness chair. Are all the statements you have made so far the truth? The things you described actually took place, as you said? Yes, they did. You heard Mr. Tony, the restaurant owner on the witness stand, say that he was threatened by Lucky Lynch and yourself. That Lucky said if he didn't join your employer's protective society, something real bad was going to happen to him or to his family. Yeah, Lucky said that. Did Duke Orlando give him orders to say that? Yeah, the, the Duke said if any restaurant owner don't want to join, just... Well, just show them how badly they need protection. And how did you show Mr. Tony? Well, you know, you heard Mr. Tony tell how we bombed his house. Who's we? Lucky Lynch and me. Who told you to bomb Mr. Tony's house? The Duke. Was that the only time the Duke ordered you to do something like that for him? No. He was the boss of the whole racket. He gave us the orders on every job we pulled. The BB killing, the Toulon murder, and... Oh, yeah. Order! Order in the court. Well, radio friends, the case of the people versus Duke Orlando is in its final moments. While he was on the witness stand, the Ohio kid disclosed the entire inside details of Orlando's restaurant racket. Now it looks as though we have a closed case against him. The district attorney is in court now, making a summation to the jury. And so, gentlemen of the jury... There can be no doubt in your minds that Duke Orlando is guilty of the crime as charged. Look back on the facts that have been disclosed here in court. We have proved that Duke Orlando ruthlessly ordered the bombing of Mr. Tony's house, knowing that a little seven-year-old innocent child would be killed or maimed. We have proved that he coolly planned the death and disappearance of Bibi, the union official that he carefully engineered a scheme to get rid of his former right-hand man, Lucky Lynch, that he... But it's not necessary for me to go on. I know, as intelligent citizens of this community, that you will not hesitate for one moment, that you will render a verdict of murder in the first degree. Duke Orlando is as guilty of the murder of Professor Toulon as if he actually wielded the blow... Harrington speaking. No, the DA is still in court. Court recessed about five minutes ago? Well, yes, I expect him any minute. Well, I doubt if you'll have time for that today. Right. Goodbye. Hello, Harrington. Well, how'd it go, DA? Well, I think we've got the case clinched. And, of course, there's still a summation for the defense. However, I'm not worried... If Lester were still defending the Duke, I wouldn't be quite as sure of the outcome. Lester might get around the tremendous amount of evidence we brought out. But I don't think Stanton, his new attorney, will be able to. I'd like to... District Attorney speaking. He does? That's slightly irregular. Well, all right, I don't see any harm. I'll be down to see him shortly. Harrington, Duke Orlando wants to see me. Don't tell me he wants to come clean now. I don't know, but I'll find out soon enough. I've got some work to clean up, but as soon as I'm through, I'll be paying Duke Orlando a visit. Hello, D.A. Hey, you like my new quarters? Not quite as nice as your own place, Duke. Ah, they ain't even got springs in the bed. You won't be here long enough to worry much about that. Trial's pretty near over, ain't it, D.A.? Yes, but... What did you want to see me about? Well, I decided to give you a break. 
That's nice of you, Orlando. Yeah, I thought so. I'm going to confess. Why? Well, I don't think my mouthpiece is doing so good. If you don't do something fast, we're going to lose this case. I don't think he has my interest at heart. You don't, eh? No, so I thought I'd confess. Then you could uh, let me off easy. What gave you that idea? Well, it saved you a lot of trouble. It would have, before this trial started. I gave you your chance when Lucky Lynch died. You could have given up then. It's too late now, Duke. I've got you dead to rights. You're going to the electric chair. <laughs> Still dreaming, D.A., huh? Well, too bad you won't take me up on this confession idea. Have made it very easy for you, and you could have let me off easy. Nothing can make it easy for you now, Duke. It certainly won't be easy for you to listen to that jury's verdict. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What is that verdict? We find the defendant, Duke Orlando, guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree as charged. Duke Orlando, have you any legal cause why judgment and sentence should not be passed upon you at this time? No, Your Honor. The sentence of the court, Duke Orlando, is that you should be confined to state's prison and that on some day in the week beginning June 11th, you'll be put to death in the mode and manner prescribed by the laws of this state. To the electric chair? No. No. Hey, sit down, Duke. You've been walking up and down for an hour. It gets me nervous. Sit down, will you? I can't sit. I can't. Every time I sit, I think of that chair. It ain't so easy being quiet with that on your mind. Yeah, I guess it ain't. Plenty dark in these cells, ain't it, Duke? Funny they put you in the cell right next to mine. I won't be here long, kid. But you're here for life. Life in a cell is a long time. Life in a cell, Duke, ain't nearly so long as the time you're dead. Yeah, I guess you're right, kid. Duke, will you talk with me a couple of minutes? Maybe I'm getting soft, I don't know. Sure. I ain't feeling so good myself. I'll even go further. I'm a fool. I've always been a fool like a... Like a rubber tire, you know, you pump up full of air. Just a lot of air that don't last. I never thought I'd hear you say something like that, Duke. Well, I never did neither, but... This is different, sitting here and thinking. You scared, kid? Yeah. So am I. Hey, Duke, did you ever fall for a nice dame... A regular dame? Once. What happened? She threw me over when she found out who I was. Did you ever know one? Nah. But I think I seen one once. Never got to know her, though. I guess there is good dames, though. Ever played baseball when you was a kid? Nah, not much. There wasn't any room on the street. Did you? Sure. I played a swell game, too. The other kids used to call me Home Run Orlando. (laughs) We had a good bunch of fellas. Sure, I used to play baseball every Saturday. We had a swell team. Have you got anybody who cares about you, whether you burn or not? Nah. I ain't either. Why are we here today and other guys outside? I don't know, kid, I guess... I guess we're here because we didn't use our brains. We tried to be too smart. I can't figure it out. Life, you know, is all complicated. It's got me licked. Duke, if you was to live your life all over again, what would you do? You got me there. Let's see. I don't know. I think I'd like a nice little place where I could stay and never go nowhere. Just stay there and eat peanuts and... Maybe play the Vic and have a few friends. Just talk, live. But not long, Duke. Come on, put a move on. You're coming with me. 
We'll put me in a cell where you'll be nice and comfy, right near the death house. Sorry, Duke. Time to take a little walk. Your last walk. Didn't no reprieve come? Didn't I get no stay? Nope. Nothing's here but your death warrant. So long, Duke. Sorry you're going, pal. The last mile. Mr. District Attorney is a dramatization by Phillips H. Lord. All names of characters used in this program are, for obvious reasons, fictitious. Mr. District Attorney, subsequent to tonight, will come to you once a week in half-hour form, commencing June 27th, 10 to 10.30 p.m., Eastern Daylight Saving Time. It will not be heard during the intervening week. We present now Fred Waring... Radio. In a brief chat with Paul Douglas, he'll tell you about Pleasure Time, which is scheduled to be heard over these stations at 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time, beginning next Monday. Are you scared? No, uh, yes, yes, a little I am bit. Scared. Well, Fred, you've yeah. always been noticed for the noted for the shortest half hour in radio, and Pleasure Time is going to be a new departure for you and the Pennsylvanians. But don't you feel that producing a new show every day is going to be a tough assignment? On the contrary, Paul, I'm very pleased with the idea of five, fifteen minute spots a week for this reason. We've always had twice as many ideas as we've had time in which to present them. And this is the opportunity we've been looking for, to produce all the ideas we've been keeping on the waiting shelf. Well, I can understand that, Fred, but what puzzles me is how do you ever expect to work that enormous gang of yours into a 15-minute show? My memory serves me right. There's Donna Day, Stuart Churchill, Polly McClinic, and Fern, Two Bees and the Honey. And, and the Les Paul Trio with Jimmy Atkins and Patsy Garrett and Gordon Goodman and Jane Wilson. And the Glee Club. Yes, and the Glee Club. Well, that adds up to a lot of entertainment. Well, that's not all, Paul. We plan to introduce a number of new features, too, both script and musical. For instance... Well, we have a new idea we hope will be an entertaining way of uh, presenting the baseball results of the day each day. Oh, you day. told me about that yes, with I music did. Yes, and of course, that rhyme. features you, Paul. Well, that's regimented. And among yeah. the featured instrumentalists will be Eric Sade. He's a violinist and arranger, and he's about the tops among the English musicians. Just arrived in this country. Formerly with Ray Noble, I believe. I met him the other afternoon. I've heard of him from Continental Records. But now, how about an inkling of these script plans? Well, I won't tell all, but I will tell you one thing. Polly will be heard in a new role, the role of a great lover. Astounded. Polly McClintock. Paul, that what? astounded is in parenthesis there. Oh, You me. speak in an astounded tone. Yes. All right, Polly McClintock in an astounded tone. That's right. That's right. Do you mean that really that croaking crooner, that fog-voiced uh, drummer of yours is going to be a great lover? Yeah, Polly is going off the deep end. A new love is coming into Polly's life. And her name is Inga Nelson. Well, isn't that the girl with the uh, Swedish dialect? She is. She's been on the air a few times in guest appearances with Fred Allen. But to my mind, she's one of the finest young comedians of today. You know, Paul, a funny woman is hard to find. Mm, I know. But anyway, Fred, how in the world... Uh, to <laughs> the turn of the sheet, page, yeah. that's all right. How in the world are you ever going to get all these featured soloists... Musicians, choral groups, and script spots into 15 minutes. It looks as though it's going to be the fullest 15 minutes in radio. Well, I'll confess, Paul, it sort of had me stumped for a time, but no longer. I'm working out what might be best described as a stagger system. A stagger system? Yes. In fact, it's a staggering stagger system. 
I'm having insomnia these nights, trying to figure out schedules, performers, works with arrangers, having conferences with script writers in order to plan material for our program in advance. You'll be a very busy man, Fred. Yes, I will, a very busy Just man. Just one more question. Been. What general effect will you attempt to achieve in producing Pleasure Time? Well, the title pretty well describes it, Paul. Just a pleasant 15 minutes with all shades of variety in music. Choral arrangements will predominate with the Glee Club featured, of course. I think we have to get off the air, Fred, so let let me say lots of success and Pleasure Time starring Fred Waring with the Pennsylvanians will start next Monday evening, ladies and gentlemen. At 7 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time. This is the National Broadcasting Company, RCA Building, Radio City, New York. Mm -hmm.